All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me see if I can get my co-host on here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, well. Well, well. Come on now. There we are. Here we are. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the God Factor podcast where we talk all things supernatural. It is another episode where we are. I am your host, Tiffany Renee, and my co host, Miss Sean. <laughs> and this is the podcast where we share the goodness of God and miracles, signs, and wonders that He is still performing in the earth today. So don't forget to like, share, and comment. Um, we want to hear from you. So, um, y'all see a serious uh, son got get, get, getting ready for school for the kids over there. So, yes, Lord, getting oh, the kids' preparation. <laughs> Try to rush back from the Tarjay. <laughs> not on the rights to Tarjay, but uh, yes. So we are almost home. Well, that's okay. Well, bless your life. We gonna go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna pray. Then we gonna get on into this good old word for tonight. Yes. So I can just thank you. We bless you. Magnify you. Glorify you. Worship you. You are. The El Shaddai, your Elohim, your Adonai. We just thank you for all that you're doing, all that you will do um, in this season. Um, we are just thank you for miracle signs and wonders that you're doing in the lives of your people today. We know that you are on time, God. We know that you are God of you're an eternal God. You are God of past, present and future. And so we just expect stand in expectation of your miracle signs and wonders to be bestowed upon us. Um, and we just don't want to forget your benefits. We want to give you praise, give you worship on all of the things that you're doing. We ask that you cover those, our children as they return back to school. Cover them with the blood of Jesus from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Keep them from harm, hurt, and danger. We ask that you mature them even in their spiritual walk um, with you um, and that they will take that light into every room that they enter into. And um, we just stand in expectation of what you're doing. We love you. We bless you. Um, and we magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So. This is our first section where we talk about the testimonies of God. So I usually call it talk to me, but I think I'm, I'm going to call it gone and testify tonight. Just gone and testify to the goodness of God and all that he is yes, doing yes, yes. in your life. So in this particular section, we like to talk about what is God doing in your life? What is he teaching you? What are you learning, seeing, or even being chastised about? So, um, what are some of those things that God is doing? I am going to go first here. So I have uh, last month was the month of well, was supposed to. Well, it was the month of miracles. That was what was prophesied. And I was going through like a little tribulation time. Um, and God was really stretching me with my faith um, just to, you know, encouraging me or I guess kind of testing to see if you're going to believe what I said. You believe what I'm telling you. And so um, I had some great momentum going on. Um, I was getting up in the morning, praying at 3 a.m. And then I got sick and it just kind of knocked me off my feet. And so um, my re-up though has been, my rebound has been tremendous. And so in this season, Right now, God is uh, really just maturing me in my faith. And he's really te teaching me the difference between faith and believing. Um, the difference between faith and believing. And um, so I have been really focused on believing God at his word. Um, and really, really extending an expectation that God is going to do unbelievable things in my life. So God is going to do unbelievable things in my life. And what that looks like for me may look different for you, but we definitely want you to share some of the things that God may be uh, teaching you, showing you, or, um, you know, even chastising you about in this season or 
if you have some things that God is doing, just let us know uh, what is he doing? What is he teaching you? What is he showing you? And like I say, right now, I'm going through a season where like everybody is gone from um, from my house. <laughs> I'm the only one here. <laughs> so um, I'm the only one here. And so it's really been quiet. And so my husband was talking to me. He was just like, have you, um, you know, have you turned the TV on? I hadn't. I just have been in the presence of God and like really having deep conversations with, with God. Um, the month of July is uh, all about the Ruach. So it's all about Holy Spirit. And um, I've just been having this really real up close personal um, experience with the Godhead. And so this morning in my med in my prayer, I, when I entered in this morning, I entered into um, I entered into what you would call when I went in, I went into the um, court yard of heaven. So I was in the courtyard and it was pretty interesting because. One of the things that I was uh, asking Holy Spirit was I wanted to um, I really wanted to get more personal with him. So, you, of course, we all know that the Godhead is a three persons. And I always uh, oftentimes when I go into heaven, I I revisit with the father and I see um, I'll see Holy Spirit there like on the throne. But I hadn't had a, a, a person encounter with him in the courts now he ride with me we talking stuff like that in my car <laughs> and all day and everywhere else but he met me when i went in today and it was just really really sweet because um i asked him some specific questions and he gave me some deliverance and some healing on the spot and so god has really been teaching me to get more in his presence and to um have an expectation of hearing from him directly from him not um yes we get words from prophets and others and things like that but you can get the word directly from me if you just spend time and get in my presence and so um that's what god has been teaching me is get in my presence and then when you get that word from god it's just like you know it's got to come to pass, right? Because you have an intimate relationship and you're talking to the creator of the universe. The cre the one who created you gave you some direct instructions and or gave you a direct word. And so this morning, it was just really um, precious to me that when I went in, I entered into the courtyards of heaven and we just walked and it was really beautiful. I just kept looking at like the flowers and stuff and all everything was alive. And it was just like, I can't even explain like how bright the colors and stuff in the courtyard was, but Holy Spirit met me there. We talked and walked in the courtyard and it was a precious time. And he told me I'm committed to you. Um, and he gave me some instructions and I asked for some things and he was like, yeah, you can, <laughs> it's yours. I said, hey, <laughs> come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> So, and now, you know, that's what this is about is you want, we have these encounters. We want to have these encounters with God where they're, they're not just so far in between. God is communing with us every single day, all day. He's there and open and willing, but are you willing? Right. So that's something we're going to talk about today. 40 days or 40 years is really up to you. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I've, I've spent some time on Holy Spirit this morning uh, in the courtyard of heaven. And um, we walked in. It, like I said, it was beautiful. And he's really been teaching me about getting in his presence. And, and this week, I've just had some solace because um, my husband and my son are in Ohio. And it's just been me and the Lord. And we've been having some good old Love revelation conversations. And, yes. And, um, you know, sometimes you just never know how you need those things and how he orchestrates those things to be like, <laughs> I didn't think about, I didn't know that I needed this time alone with God. You know, like I do spend, like, even when my husband is here, my son is here, I get up and I spend my, my time in the morning 
but now it's just me and him. Like, and I mean, and I didn't know that I needed that time. And I'm just so thankful that he carves out those times for you to like, he loves you so much on an individual level that he carves out times specifically for you to really spend with you and groom you and love on you. And so that's, that's my testimony. Okay. <laughs> it's nothing like those intimate times, especially when he takes the time to pour into you. It's like he orchestrates those special moments and it'd be right at the time that we need. Although we may not know that we need those that 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 moment or that time to just allow him to pour into us. It's those moments that we appreciate the more because um, so many times we get caught up in life and just going with things. Yes, we are praying and, you know, fasting and reading in our word or whatever the case may have you. But we go with the just the life, you know, being a mom, being a husband, I mean, you know, being a wife, being a husband, whatever your role is or whatever your right. title is, we get caught up just in life and just making things happen and just going through life that sometimes he gives us those special moments like you have right now, or he can just pour into you that intimate time to carry you for until he does it again. So it's those moments that we're grateful for. So definitely. Amen to that. So sis, come on, you share what's, that was a good word, but what's your what's your lessons? What you been teaching? What you God teaching you? What He chastising you? You know, it's been <laughs> um, you know. So we all know, you know, we lost my uncle and uh, my sisters. Um, her her son had passed, and you know, it's it's been a time where you really have um, a time to reflect. And even coming into um, you know our our podcast this evening, I got a call. You know, while trying to get on the call, but it's amazing how God orchestrates stuff and lines stuff up and allows you to minister to, you know, certain ones where you're not even thinking, you know, of ministering or whatever the case may have you, but just those encouraging words that you give to others in the way, mm -hmm. um, you know, how you don't even know that you're being used, you know, how, you know, at, you know, sometimes we go and we, we go to be a blessing, but then in ourselves, we're being blessed or we need a blessing, but then end up blessing others. So um, in this time, it's been a reflection time and time to process and time to allow myself to heal. And it's, it's a bunch of different emotions going on, but in, in different parts, you know, he's showing me, okay, you know, how he's doing different things, you know, for his glory alone. So right now it's, it's, um, how can I say, I guess maybe I want to be ministered to, but then he's taking me out of my shell in a lot of areas <laughs> where he's allowing me to minister to others, if that makes sense. Mm, While yes. also pouring and ministering and healing me, um, you know, just through different emotions and dealing with grief and dealing with guilt in certain areas. And then, you know, taking conversations and just, just the whole process of it all. And then you go through the the emotions of not wanting to be bothered with people, but in the same instance, you need to be bothered with people because they still need you. You can't just check out. You know what I mean? You got to just, you know, you got to just know your role, but just being able to balance all of those things is where I am right now. You know, just, just um, as we're going through life, you know, allowing him to pour through me, although I'm still active in my roles, but yes. I can definitely say I've definitely been, grateful for those intimate times where he's pulled me away and just ministered directly to me. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, sorry. Um, listen, you just, what you're talking about is kind of what we talked about being a blessed, uh, blessing others when you feel like you need a blessing, you know, sometimes, and I was last week's, um, topic was sometimes you feel like you need it and God will use you, but it just even goes back to thinking about too, how when we sow, you know, you're pouring out and then from you sowing, God's going to pour into you. I think about too, Absolutely. Um, hey, you girl, know, Ricky Smiley, uh, Ricky Smiley um, lost his son and during his, during his morning time, morning season, morning season, he actually got up and went to a shelter and he was like, I just need to serve. Like, I just need to do, I just need to give back in some type of way. 
And he was just saying how, even though he was struggling and, you know, he was going through his uh, traumatic time that getting in the presence of people who were in need and taking the focus off yourself and serving other people, you know, was kind of healing for him. And that's what I hear you saying too, even in this time, you know, that you are grieving and you're going through those things that God is still sending people to you that you're pouring into. And I'm sure he's sending other people to pour into you as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, because this weekend you had you a good old time, honey. We uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I would have weekend, to say so. we, it was we celebrated uh Chantel's birthday, honey. We had brunch and then we had lunch and then we had dinner. Okay, yeah, we did it all, all <laughs> uh, of the above, and it was much needed. Like, even in that, it was just set up for us just to go and hang out, just to do brunch. But we ended up spending the whole day together and it's what I needed, you know, for my sisters just to pour into me, to have that fellowship, you know, to step away from everything. It was needful. I'm grateful. And yeah, who would have knew? You know what I mean? We was just all there. Okay, let's just get together just to hang out. But we ended up spending the whole day together. Right. And it was awesome. Yeah. So God knows what we need and it's a blessing. He blesses us in all, all things and you know, I just love to see how he orchestrates things because the way like his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways. And the way that he goes about doing it, you just know it's God. And it just be like, thank you. You know, like <laughs> just like, thank you. I needed that. I didn't know I needed that. Um, yes. You know, like I said, I didn't know I needed this to myself, you know, because, you know, being newly married and getting into the uh, process of caring for so many other people sometimes you forget about yourself and then sometimes you just are on go with all all of these things that you you know that need to be done and need to be attended to but um like i said i do this week it just has been precious to me because i didn't know how much i missed just having me and god time you know, long times of that. And I was, and I've been able to do that. Um, and I'm not doing that with my husband feeling like I'm taking some time away from him or my son feeling like I'm taking time away from him, but God has orchestrated that just, you know, just like Zari said, we spoiled right, right, not rotten. And That's so, right. <laughs> you know, everything that we need, God is already doing it, you know? And so, all righty. So we're going to get into this all good old word today. Uh, yes. The topic is 40 days or 40 years. It is really up to you. Yes. So, um, this is what came to mind here is, you know, in numbers 14, where um, I'm just give kind of a synopsis and Sean, you can join in, you know, give your commentary as, as whenever you feel like it. But, you know, this is when the Israelites was rebelling, you know, they had been out in the wilderness and God had already had told him that they he had given them the told them the prop the promise right he's told them that oh, I to a land full of milk and honey. milk and honey yes you already got this land of milk and honey what I want you to do is I want you to go and see just you know go check out what I have set up for you so come on now you know, he told Moses to send um, a leader from each tribe to go out and can canvas the spite, the spot. And uh, he just sent them people out there. And what happened, Sean? What they come back with? <laughs> Unbelief. <laughs> Unbelief. <laughs> the people's one they got up and come back with unbelief, but there was two. That came oh. out at all. There's you always a remnant. Come on now. Listen, it's nothing. They got a few giants and things, but you know, it's nothing new. It's nothing too hard for you. Nothing too hard. Right. And you know, he sent all of these elders out there and they stuck in their ways and the way we used to do things and things and things. And God is trying to do a new thing. <laughs> Come on now. And give you a whole. We was just talking about this in the Father's Prayer Roll. Like God already said, I'll give you houses you did not build, land you ain't had to cultivate, wells you didn't dig, 
buying your vineyards, you ain't you ain't have to do that. All this is set up for you. For you. Yes. All of this is set up for you. This is the promise. This is what I'm giving you. But I want you to go check it out. And the people, like you say, they go and they check it out. And then only two of them come back with a good report. The young, the young lads. The young lads. <laughs> <laughs> and it reminds me too of. You know, because you got to think about it, uh, Caleb and Joshua, they had, I don't know that they um, knew of like the old way, like they were, you know, they knew some of it, obviously, because they was young, but, you know, they had seen these miracle signs and wonders at a young age that God had done for them. And it came in with child belief. That's what it yeah. was. It came in with child belief. Lord, I seen you do this. I seen these things happen. You know, uh, uh, the great God that can split the waters and we walking on dry land. I mean, we looking at, you know, whales and things you right. know, as we just gone on through here. OK, we're looking at all this greatness. And y'all want to question if we could take over a couple of giants and things over in this land that he promised to us. Right. I mean, I've seen too much. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times we get caught in that place. You know, like we've seen God, we've seen him move in different areas of our lives, but then something happens and we get stuck and it's just like, okay, Lord, I know I can believe you for this, but can I really believe you for all of this? Somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere along the line, you know, our greatest, you know, downfall, the audacity to even, you know, come, come, come against God to say, you know, but can you, you know what I mean? That's what unbelief kicked in. Like, but yeah. can you? No, 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 no. I've seen you do this thing. My track record. Yes. Shows you continuously that I'm showing up and showing out. The audacity, yes. like you said, the audacity of it all. The audacity. Um, I was listening to John Michael McKinney. He said, unbelief is the audacity to not believe God. Um, and really it's like a betrayal of trust. And that thing hit me right here. A betrayal of trust, like that part right there. Uh, and, you know, it goes back and this is how God is. You know, he works all things together for good. You know, like I was I was uh, testifying last week how I had to remember. OK, the things that God had done for me and I had to get up in this hill journal right here uh, and, and look at all of these things that he didn't wrote and gave me <laughs> and things that yes, in the book of testimonies. OK, yes, the book of testimonies and look at the highlighted places where he has come through and answer prayers. And you tripping over here for what? And I was laying in the bed, you know, just not ever which way, just crying because, you know, the audacity of you not to believe <laughs> that I can't do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think of us. And how many times have I come through for you, you know, forgetting out my benefits? D don't forget all of the things that I promised. And just like these, you know, just like the Israelites, Y'all are looking at the promise like you see it. They didn't brought back grapes that's big as my head. Like two people got to carry the thing. <laughs> Wait. And sometimes it's in the lesson learned. It's just mm -hmm. like, you know, sometimes like, you know, some of us want to go the hard way. You know, you think you're so smart. <laughs> I don't know why you have to be so so smart. The audacity to think that you're just smarter than him who created you. I'm just saying. I've been there. I'm 40 years or 40 days. Right. Okay. Listen, I'm gonna tell the lie right. Let me go ahead and tell it right. One time it was some years back, and, and it was a lesson that needed to be learned. I, you know, supposed to be a 40 day fast. Just you know, 40 days. That's it. Go and get your lesson, get what the Lord needs to give you, get blessed and move on, ma'am. No, mm -mm. me with my small self decided that I wanted to be hard head and do some things my own way. <laughs> Lo and behold, like the Israelites, you know, walked around 40 years for no reason when it could have just been done in 40 days. I mean, you know, no, nah, I had to go on that 40 day fast three times. Ooh. Girl. <laughs> Three times, three, three times, times. Yes. three times. Yes, I, well. listen, I fasted for a whole year. Okay, three times we had to redo this fast. And at the, you know, at the end though. of the fast, I was like, okay, you know, whoo. He said, no, nah, you got to go again. I said, a who? <laughs> a 
what? He said, no, you got to, you got to go again. You didn't get the lesson, mm -hmm. but it prepared me for what I was getting ready to embark upon the following year. It was some things that he needed me to know. He needed me to trust him. He needed me to believe in him and he needed me to do what he said, do. Yeah. And so in each, um, fast, I got a lesson in each fast. It was, it was building relationship and trust in him. It was, you know, the late, the, the lesson, the experience. So when life threw different challenges, when life came at me, I was able to take all that I had learned from those fasts and move with God, you know what I mean? And know where my help came from and know not to depend on others and what people thought. A lot of times we don't hear God and I needed to hear him. I needed to hear what he was telling me and believe what he was telling me. I couldn't depend on the other voices a lot of times. Sometimes you got family voices, your friend voices, you know, voices of your church family. You got all these different things, but God needed me to hear him. So it was just different parts of the fast that I needed to learn in order to move in the direction that he was leveling me up, growing me up to. Yeah, that's good. That's good right there. And sometimes, you know, my um my one of my my spiritual mothers used to say, you gonna lick that calf again. <laughs> Like you, you gonna keep licking that calf. Like so, ain't that nasty? Let that go. You know, you keep going back around and around. And God is so gracious, like you said. Even, even though he, it may have felt like a chastisement. Like, no, you got to do this again. Each time you got stronger. Each time you learned a, you know, learned something different and learned something about. I know for me. Each time I learn something about myself and then I also learn more about the character of God. And um, that's, Absolutely. you know, once I was in, I had to, you know, get up at 3 a.m. Um, and uh, I was wrestling with that thing. <laughs> Hey, you gonna be at listen one. three o'clock yeah. probably wouldn't have bothered me because I'm a night owl, so I'm up uh, listen. tonight. Listen, well, I'm you know me, I'll be at bed, bed, bed at seven o'clock. Okay, Tiffany over there, mm -mm. she in the bed by nine. Listen, <laughs> her eyes is getting low by eight fifteen. By nine o'clock, she out of there. So three o'clock, yeah. Listen, that's a challenge. Eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, a timer goes off and tells my body it's time to wind down. <laughs> so by 9 30, I'm good and cozy in the bed. I didn't pray, declare, envision myself in that bed sleep. <laughs> okay. So, and I do get up early, but three o'clock was still like, and I was doing it, but I was doing it like. I was getting up at three and he wanted me to be at, on watch at three. And I said, he said, I'm going to trust you. And you, you late. Like, Come on now. Clock. No, you getting up at three. That which means you're getting out. Of, I said, I want you to be on watch at three. So then I had to push that thing back to 245. And my pro husband, he just was so gracious with me. <laughs> getting up at 245. But. The discipline will one of the things that God has been teaching me too is to be disciplined and be consistent um, yes. with everything that you're doing, you know. Um, and when he shows you something, like he did the Israelites, he told them the promise, and then he showed them what it looked like. And your job is to believe it and then follow instructions where. A lot of times from me, I want to ask questions. <laughs> what we got to oh, what we gonna do right here? How we gonna do that? The following <laughs> so I feel what the Israelites are saying because it's like, look, the people over there, they this, that, and the third, and you know, all of that fear that comes up. So it just shows you the humanistic side and the things that we all deal with. Because they were talking about all the kings that was there, the Hizites, the Jebusites, the 
all of these things. And here's the thing, when God is um, bringing you into something new, there will be your, there are going to be obstacles that you have to overcome. But the blessing is you already have the victory. He's already shown you that is yours. So now it's just like, okay, it's like I now I think about it like Mario Brothers, you know, like, okay, we going to get to the queen. Okay. okay. She's getting re rescued. I don't know how many times we're going to have to go through this thing and jump over this. And then every time I would go through it, I learned a different trick. And, you know, Bowser might have got me on the third leg the first time, but he ain't going to get me that a second time. So I'm going back. And then every time, <laughs> you know, I get a little bit further, a little bit further. But I think those those kings, the Hezekites, Prezites, Jebusites, all of those, those represent obstacles that will always be there. There will always be things that you're going to have to overcome, trust God for. But the bless, the belief comes in believing that it's already done. He has already said that this is yours. So if you believe him, then you have to also believe that if it is mine, if it's already done, whatever I need to get over these things, God has to provide for me because he told me it's mine. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so. When we say 40 days or 40 years is really up to you, it really is up to you to make up your mind. Are you going to be like Joshua and Caleb and believe God at his word? Right. And just take the steps, you know, or are you going to be like the elders, the leaders? These were leaders. OK, this one just these were the leaders in the tribes who had so much unbelief that it caused them to die off in the wilderness before receiving the promise. Right. They didn't get to experience all of this greatness because of unbelief. Exactly. It's already promised to them. And I want all of the things that has been written in my destiny book. <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, let me on a court. Let me get this thing right so I can receive all that God has for me, not just in you know my next life, but this life here. You right. know, the promises are in this life here. Let us enjoy all the greatness that God has for us here. Here, right, exactly. Because I went in heaven, I I ain't gonna need all you know, it's it's already done there. There, I have to work out my salvation here. <laughs> So I have to work out these things here. And I want, the, like you said, I want those things here um, because those are things that have been promised to me. So the question then becomes, when you see these obstacles, when you see these kings, your Hezites, your Jebusites, your Parasites, your whatever, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to suit up? Put on that full armor and march forth, or are you going to allow unbelief and fear to stop you from getting to the promised land? Hmm. So different. it really is a it is a paradigm shift that I think one of the things too is that even though the Israelites had gone through all of this stuff, like like they had they wanted to come out of captivity. God heard your cry. He brought you out and he didn't just bring you out. Um, he brought you out with stuff. Go on and get this. Listen, take all that. Get it out. Listen, <laughs> listen get your people. Get the, I don't care what you take. Just get up out of here. Listen, he didn't send you away with nothing. Thank he you. Sent you. away with exceeding pressure. And abundantly mm -hmm. more than you could even think or even ask. That was crazy. Come on now. Who but God can do something like that? Thank you. Like you first. Of all, okay. So I'm a, listen, I'm going to set you up. We coming out of here and you're going to get all your stuff and their stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> take there, you know, the wealth of the wicked. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna go ahead and bless you. You know, just 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 keep it on coming. And I'm gonna bless you like this. Then you're gonna get out here, then you're gonna start crying about food, and you hungry and you thirsty. <laughs> But I'm going to provide all of that for you on your journey. Here, here's some manna. Take this. You ain't even got to toil. You ain't got to toil for it. You ain't got to work for it. You just get it because of who you are. My Lord. You are my child. And I'm going to bless you with all of these things. So I'm going to bless you. Your clothes don't run out. Your shoes didn't run out. Your now shoes. we. Who but God can do that? Thank you. And then you get here and I'm now I have brought you from this and I'm going to show you where I'm taking you. Can you believe me? Furthermore, can you believe me even for this? After I just showed you. I pretty, you know, I can do anything. <laughs> you know, are you still are you? Go, will you believe? And so just like them, it's up to us to make that paradigm shift of. Trusting God, even when it doesn't look like it can be a win because i believe you so wholeheartedly because i have records of where you have brought me through on more than one occasion i mean we got books sis we got books <laughs> I got exactly i got books okay i mean how many how many of these books do we need? <laughs> We got books. I mean, I'm just saying, we got books for days. Um, right. But I mean, he continues to show himself over and over. Listen, and over again. Yes. <laughs> Listen, he just continues to just, it's a mindset thing. So mm -hmm. to get caught up in life and just forget how far he's brought us or forget the testimonies or forget that he showed up and showed out. And not even that we forget. It's just, you know, you get caught up in your own self, you know, mm -hmm. and our ways are not his ways. So we got to start being on his same mindset because when we were on the same mindset, we, we seen him show out and just do all kinds of stuff. Like I said, we got pages of, of testimonies exactly. of him coming out and just being who he is because he's the great I am. He's I am in every situation. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, looking at the, the Israelites with the shoes, that still blows my mind. I am who I am. I'm be I'm gonna be your shoes, okay? Right. Bro, <laughs> bro. What? I mean, they weren't going to stores picking up shoes. My speed girl, I gotta go buy a new pair. And not that I don't like new pairs of shoes, but I'm just saying he was the great I am back then. Exactly. In every situation. Yeah, that's blows my mind. Just and he continues to do that. You know, he is still the same God. And he's still blowing my mind. And that's really what this podcast is about. It's just talking about the goodness of God and how he shows up and, and those testimonies of how he does that in our lives. And how and we want you to share that with us. How is he doing that in your life? And when you can think about it, he's done it over and over and over again. And so we can like um, the, one of the biggest things, too, is <clears throat> the more you get in his presence, the more you're able to learn to hear the more you're able to understand when he's speaking the more you get in his presence the more he transforms your mind to be more like his mind so that then absolutely you can move toward through these things and it don't take you 40 days it don't even take you it listen god is the god of now right <laughs> now we pray stuff lord okay and then go on in jesus name and it's done wow. All right Okay, and, Lord. I need you to touch James' ear. I don't know what's going on with James' ears. It's all my grandfather mm -hmm. went through some little scenarios with his ears, but it was clogged, and then you know it was bleeding. Different things. Listen, we ain't got time for this shenanigans. Going to heal is here because <laughs> it is written that it, by your strikes he is healed. So right. we got to go on in Jesus' name. This this is at least our words. We ain't got to we ain't got time to be you know frolicking over this little <laughs> stuff. We got to go on. <laughs> listen james ear is doing just fine right now hey that okay fine. hello listen, i went to the doctor got it checked out everything is good okay <laughs> praise him who but god amen amen who but god could do that and we have to get into 
the practice of taking authority over these things that this is not something that we're supposed to be toiling with and accepting now i'm not when things happen yes they're going to happen but we have authority over them so again going back it's really up to you of how much of it you're going to be willing to surrender to his will for your life or you're going to keep trying to do it yourself you know um and that's another thing child, is learning to let go let, and let him be god right hands out still <laughs> and know that I'm god. you know how many exactly. times I, I you know you get the memo just to be still you don't want to listen so then my godmother of course would come along and say sean just be still you know because you know apparently you're not listening to him to tell you to be still so he's gonna send you an audible boy just be still know that he's got just sit down go on over there have a little seat and let him do what he do come on now <laughs> like the old folks say get away <laughs> <Sit down. laughs> yes so i um well i i i'm thankful for the revelations that were shared here tonight you know it really is up to you you do have to work out your own salvation god is willing and he has already given you the promises every one of those promises that's in in the book if you don't know where they is, start in deuteronomy chat just go on to deuteronomy <laughs> well, bless your soul okay bless you know they're all over the book it's all over right the book. they are all over the book but you you know if you want somewhere to start start in deuteronomy those blessings are there for you and God wants to give them to you. He wants you to have these things. So if God has been telling you something, he's shown you something, um, he's given you a glimpse of what he wants you to have, believe him. And if you are struggling with that, repent. Father, forgive me for my unbelief. You know, nail that unbelief to the cross, cover with the blood of Jesus, and then move on. And then start walking in faith because god wants to get these things to you like it's i don't that's one of the things when i went into uh the courtyard of heaven th this morning holy spirit just was like i am committed to you like i'm committed to you i want if somebody's committed to you they want to do all that they can for you when you're committed to somebody else you want to show them those things and god is the same way he wants to get these things to you he has these he he gets excited to reward you with these things so he's not trying to hold anything from you he just wants you to mature he wants you to trust him he wants you to believe him so it don't take you forever and ever amen he wants to get these things to you now okay so um amen that's all i got to say about that <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day it's a mindset thing exactly you gotta make your mind up that you're going to walk with them and truly allow him just to guide you and lead you in this life. It's a mindset change. I mean, yes. we can make our minds up to do whatever. At the end of the day, you're going to do what you want to do. But why not let that be Jesus leading you? The mindset thing. Absolutely. So where um, that is our broadcast tonight, 40 days or 40 years is really up to you. Like Sean said, it is a mindset thing. It's a paradigm shift. You want to take on the mind of Christ and Remember that, you know, I, one of the things that struck with me, that unbelief, the audacity to not trust God, you know, but it really is a betrayal of trust. It's a betrayal of trust like you showing that you don't trust him. And I think probably for all of us, God is asking that question. Do you trust me? And so um, you have to answer that. Do you trust him? Um, Repent. But, repent yes but we we gonna go on and we gonna trust them and we're gonna call each other out and we're gonna hold each other accountable to yes. trusting god <laughs> mm -hmm. and his word and we when we do that we'll see even more miracle signs and wonders because he is a rewarder of those who diligently diligently seeks him so um before we leave tonight of course we want if you you know we love all of you uh joining in we thank you for those who are watching now and those who will watch the replay remember to love like and share uh tag somebody invite them to come every tuesday 7 p.m uh mountain standard time we are here with the god factor podcast um and you know if you want to 
so a seed if you're believing sowing into revelation we definitely believe it um you can always go to the godfactor.com um and share you you know if you go to the godfactor.com we have some merchandise there that you can um that you can purchase and uh is this showing sean it is not showing at the moment okay let's see okay so if you there we go go to the godfactor.com we have a plethora of shirts that shirts apparel that you can um get there we have some that say the god factor born to rain is our newest item um and on some other ones that say god factor but you can shop with us there or you can also go to billionaire status that is another one of our uh, sponsors so you can also go to um billionaire status let's see if that one shows up for us and shop with us and get you some wear and just really you know rep your faith child so uh <laughs> that part right there <laughs> so you can also go to billionaire status uh, dot com and you can get all kinds of merchandise there um if you are boss chick you can also get some billionaire boss chick um merchandise but this is our newest item here is uh, this mug that says billionaire status and it has Genesis 126 there. So remembering that you have dominion just in case y'all forget. But uh <laughs> so um so yes yeah, so, and then if you want to sew into the ministry you can also go to cash out we have the God Factor T H E E God Factor but we um love to share this wisdom and word with you um and just share the goodness of god uh, is there anything else you want to share with the people um sean i believe we are good for now okay so let's see all righty so let's go ahead and sean will you pray for us absolutely so god we just thank you for all that you've done today Thank you for your keeping power, for keeping us during the week. Um, just asking that you continue to go with us throughout um, the rest of the week um, as you go with us throughout the year and our new journeys and seasons in this life. Um, there is nobody like you. We do thank you for the God factor where we can come together and just talk about all the goodness, all of our testimonies and share with one another. Um, God, do everything for your glory alone. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Asking that you cover us under your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so that is our podcast for tonight. It is the God Factor, the number one supernatural podcast where we share the goodness of God, his miracles, signs, and wonders that he is still performing today. Don't forget to remember to love, like, share, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the T-H-E-E -E, God Factor, where you can get teachings, you can get prayers, and keep up with all of the good things that God is doing in the earth. But until next time, we want to encourage you to expect a miracle. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.